What's going on, folks? Mike Singer, blueandgold.com, joined by rivals.com South Central recruiting analyst Sam Spiegelman was locked and dialed into the Logan Diggs commitment, recruitment, and signing. Um, so, of course, Logan Diggs uh, announced on National Signing Day 2.0 that he um, was a part of Notre Dame's class. Sam, you're all over it. Like I said, make sure you check out Sam's article at blueandgold.com. We'll leave the uh, link to it in the comments section of this article as well. Sam, what can you kind of tell us about how this came together for Notre Dame? Yeah, uh, what a what an interesting end to his recruitment. And, and obviously, you know, we, the, the cat is out of the bag. He signed in December, um, which which is just, you know, it's an interesting decision on on Logan's part. If, if he really was struggling with with Notre Dame versus LSU, um, you know, there have been other instances at, at Rummel where kids have signed in December and then they wait till February to, you know, announce or, or really just sign. Um, that's happened with guys last year in Koi Moore. Obviously, every school in different parts of the country is is learning about the early signing period and and the ramifications now in, in 2021 now and what it means about getting possibly pushed out of the class if you don't sign, yada, yada, yada. Um, but of course, you know, I think I think Logan felt comfortable with with his decision. That's why he signed. You know, he he had the offer. I know it was only for a couple of days, but communication between him and LSU had had lasted well before that. Um I think the bigger thing was was obviously Terry Terry Joseph leaving uh, for the University of Texas. Um, you know, kids from New Orleans need someone to relate to when you go to different parts of the country. It's just something that's uh, it's in the culture down here, um, and and you you've seen it time and time again with with kids that have left New Orleans or or Louisiana and gone up to South Bend, and if they don't have a coach or, or a, a teammate or someone from from the area that can relate to them, it, it can be hard. Um, especially if you aren't playing right away to be away from home. Um, so with, with Coach Joseph leaving and obviously his his cousin, Mickey Joseph, and Kevin Falk leading the charge for LSU, um, a lot of hometown pressure. I know he was able to get on campus a couple of times and meet with other players who are already on campus uh, in the 2021 class, like Mason Smith, Garrett Nussmeyer, who obviously wanted to recruit Logan to stay home. And obviously he made this decision knowing that an LSU offer could come. He, he had to wrestle with, you know, I, I think friends or, or coaches who might have wanted, you know, to see him stay close to home. But ultimately, you need to credit the Notre Dame staff and in particular, Brian Kelly uh, and, and Coach Taylor for, for it, being able to close the deal. Um, he ha- obviously had relationships with both those coaches. But, uh, you know, at, at the time, uh, you know, Notre Dame was still able to communicate with him and that went a long way. And, and they did a fantastic job of, you know, at least – broadening his horizons to kind of take a chance is a reason he committed to them. He almost had to be reminded of it. And the way they did it was uh, obviously enough to get the job done. Right. You mentioned a a really interesting point that I feel like people don't really understand is that. So um, he signed in December and it wasn't some uh, big thing of like, I want to have a big drama thing. It ended up like that. But when he signed, it was a thing of like the Rummel kids. And you correct me if I'm wrong. They just don't really do the December signings like they do everything kind of in February. Is that just why he initially signed in December to, to wait until February? Yeah. And, and obviously he, he wanted to go to Notre Dame, you know, obviously the coaching shakeup, it's hard to, to process and, and everything. Sometimes, you know, kids don't pay attention to the news as, as much as we do. Um, and sometimes, you know, Logan is, he keeps to himself. He's a quiet kid. Um, I, I think he's, uh, I'm not even sure if he's going to school in person. I believe he might be virtual. Yeah. So we're um, watching his tape here. Um, he had a big season. Uh, I know he's like class 5A Louisiana sports writer, uh, offensive player of the year. Um, what do you think when you pop on his tape? And, you know, I believe you've been able to evaluate him in person as well at a rivals camp. Yeah, we've been able to see Logan a bunch of times uh, during his time at Rummel. Um, obviously, I'm located here in New Orleans and he goes to Rummel down the road. Um, he's someone that, uh, you know, I think he started his career at Rummel playing like receiver. Um, and then uh, I was actually at one of the first practices where they they lined him up in the backfield. And, and yeah, he was catching passes out of the backfield, but he's six foot, uh, about 185, 190 at the time. Um, he's just a gifted athlete that has kind of taken to the running back position. He's a big bodied running back, but he's super nimble, super athletic. He's continued to add to his frame. So you see the power in his game. Um yeah, he was uh, he was the class five A most outstanding player, which says a lot uh, given the the talent. And you're talking about guys like Mason Smith, 
the number one prospect in the country in that same classification here in Louisiana. Wow. Um, I think, like I've said to you, I think privately, Logan is new to the running back position. He's just kind of getting his feet wet. So I think his upside is is through the roof. And, and he was definitely considered um, a candidate to move up to the 5'8"-ish ranks. Um, I think, obviously, looking back, the difference between a 5'7 and a 5'8 is so, is so minimal. Um, you know, I think he, he showed a lot. Um, I think there's still, you know, you want to see some more vision in his game, the ability to kind of separate from the pack a little bit more. But he's shown so much flashes that yeah this this could easily be a decision we regret he is still one of the best players in louisiana one of the best running backs in the country regardless of three or four stars right here yes yeah, so you mentioned the 5.7 recruit ranking that's that high three-star designation you're saying that you know kind of a borderline very close to 5.8 right. you know i feel like people just you know three star is a three star and then there's like this huge jump to four star people don't understand there's like three different tiers of three star status um, and, and three different tiers of four star status and of course just the one tier for five stars uh, but yeah so you you feel like you know close there that was an interesting tidbit about um, him being so new to the running back position because he does so many things so well lead blocking catching out of the backfield um, you know Lance Taylor coached Christian McCaffrey um, when he was at Stanford so uh, Taylor loves these all-purpose backs um, I know there's kind of been rumors out there that LSU was looking at him as a, as a linebacker at time. Um, do you feel like he's even has the versatility if running back doesn't work out? You know, he could play linebacker. Yeah, I mean, I think, like I said, Luka put Logan at wide receiver, and he's just going to be a big, bulky wide receiver, but he's super athletic. He's super fast, and he's explosive. Um, he catches the ball so well. But then you think about him at linebacker. I mean, you know, at LSU, they, they've done that a, a couple of different times, obviously, with Devin White being the most famous guy to, to switch the sides of the ball. And linebacker is obviously a tremendous need. Um, I think especially going outside of the SEC for someone, he, you could rely on your athleticism more than your frame. And I think if he wanted to play no, uh, linebacker Notre Dame, it would be up to him. I, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't. He's just such a gifted athlete but yeah I could look like an idiot they could put him at linebacker and he could jump a bunch of routes and, and house it he's he's certainly capable of doing anything he's he's learned running back so quickly I'm pretty sure he could learn linebacker as well before we get you out of here Sam um you know like we said you're the south central recruiting analyst for rivals uh Texas Louisiana being your your, your big two states how is Notre Dame perceived down there um you know it, it's you know not states that Notre Dame routinely is getting a bunch of guys down there the the, the state in the south are getting the most guys out of right now is Georgia um but how is Notre Dame perceived in your two states there yeah I think I think the Notre Dame offer still carries a, a ton of prestige um in the south like like you said they don't they don't recruit um this this neck of the woods too heavily but you know there have been certain recruitments where they find guys that that fit the criteria and they recruit them really well i think about you know it's it's kind of been like glass half half full um with with guys like lawrence keys versus guys like michael young um but uh you know i think it's each each case is is individual i think obviously logan diggs could could be a difference maker um and, and that could catch more eyes um you know moving forward but you know, I think the guys that Notre Dame identifies, they, they've had a really good shot with whether they've closed or, or haven't closed. They've still been in those races, and it depends on each kid and in what particular situation they're in and what they're looking for. Um, like I said, a guy, a guy like Lawrence Keyes has, has mapped out great so far uh, for Notre Dame, and I think that they're still really excited about what's what's in the future there. Um, and I think Logan Diggs is going to re reinvigorate that excitement and there will be instances where they get guys from Louisiana or Texas or Mississippi or, you know, it all depends on the the individual and, and obviously the individual that Notre Dame wants to recruit. Good stuff. Sam Spiegelman, uh, we really appreciate you joining the show and, and talking about Logan Diggs. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.